informal learning in North American music education. My thesis for this paper is that music educators need to create more space for informal learning to occur in the music classroom. For a long time, we have depended largely on formal practices as the vehicles by which we make music with our students in the school setting, but the time for change has come. I believe that composition in an informal context is a highly effective way to create space for informal learning to take place within this generation of students. More schools in North America need to implement this concept within their music curriculums. A key question I will attempt to answer is, how can composing in an informal context pave the way for musicking in formal contexts, as well as provide students with the skills to make music for the rest of their lives? The following are a few of the sources I intend to use as some groundwork for my paper. This first source listed is a blog titled, Catalysts and Connections, Expanding Dialogue in Music Education. This blog is written by Evan Tobias, who is Instructor of Music Education at Arizona State University School of Music. He recently posted a blog with links to online books about composition in the classroom. The second source listed is an article by Kashubin Smith titled, A Principled Approach to Teaching Music Composition to Children. The third source listed is Heidi Westerlin's article, Garage Rock Band's A Future Model for Developing Music Expertise, which we read in class. A fourth source is the Musical Futures website. Each of these sources provide a look into the benefits of music classroom composition in both formal and informal contexts, and also provide insight as to how such an approach is more fitting for the students of today. This next slide includes some other topics that I hope to cover in my paper. The first is, do students prefer to keep their outside music separate from their school music? For this, I would like to interview middle school and high school students via Facebook messages to get their opinions. Another topic is about the function of music as being a space to be different. A third topic is honoring their world, the student's world, versus honoring our world, a world in which we are included. To take these ideas a step further, I say that we need to improve our national standards, if we're not going to change them, by creating some way to encourage individual teachers and school districts to place special emphasis on standards 3 and 4, since those are the ones that don't get as much attention as the rest. I also believe in emphasizing informal practices over formal practices. Of course, the ideal music classroom would be one that is able to incorporate both formal and informal practices. For example, not only choir and band electives are offered, but songwriting and jam session classes are offered as well. For those districts and schools that can afford it, I believe it should be required of music educators to provide both kinds of courses that can provide spaces for formal and informal learning. For those that can't afford it, they should rely more on informal learning experiences as opposed to formal learning experiences. I plan to explore these ideas further in my paper. 